what's going on guys wayfinder dropped a surprise on us yesterday as well as the quality of life 2 update patch i'm going to go over the surprise first which is that it's on ps5 early for those who have already purchased it and i'm going to go over the quality of life 2 patches later at the timestamp. if you guys want to just skip ahead to that and don't care about the ps5 stuff because i'm going to go over some of the changes real quick and some information for those who are just jumping on ps5 for the first time so if you're jumping on PS5 for the first time, you can see here I am on the PS5. No jokes here. Uh, you'll get everything kind of unlocks as you play the game. You'll unlock all the characters as you play the game. Like in the first part of the quest is just unlocking those first three characters. You'll find Grendel in the Gloom Pit quest. You'll find Senya uh, defeating the chest, the Seaver chest. So you'll just find them while playing the game. No hard grinding for the characters. What you're grinding for now is going to be upgrading the things to upgrade the characters. Armor, because now instead of having skins, they converted all the skins into armor. If I go into my character, you can see where it says armor set. And there's all these various sets that you have to find throughout the world. There's also various skins. Uh, all the artifacts are still there. And your, the weapons are dropping as uh like drops with the various stats on them so you can see this one it's level twos level ones and then this one has an attack echo slot and these have defense echo slots so you're you're grinding for drops echoes and that stuff you can also change your character and it, the game also pauses now you can also change your character anytime if you're in a dungeon you just want to switch over to another character and you have them unlocked you can change the character at any time now, what's going on with your rune silver that you spent? If you spent any rune silver, if you bought any rune silver, all that's getting converted over into something called founders coins. And the amount of founders coins you get depends on the amount of rune silver that you had on your account, period. So not what you had left, but what you had in total. So if you had up to 2,400 coins, you'll have one coin. If you had up to 4,400 rune silver, I should say. You have two coins. If you had up to 6,400, you have three coins. Up to 8,400, four coins. Up to 10,400, five up to 12,406 and up to seven, or up to 20, 12,500, you'll have seven coins. And the coins are used here at Avery's. This will unlock once you build your first Gloom Dagger. You go into Avery's, you can see I bought three things already because I only have three coins on PlayStation. Uh, you see that Poison Proof, Mourner's Mask, Foundling Turtle, Foundling Pup, Gorehound, and Foundling Bas Basilisk, which is a uh, pet, and Ashfall. So you have three pets, three skins and a mount. Carefully, definitely want to go for the mount. If you had one coin, I would recommend going for the mount. Uh, if you want to see what the mount looks like, it's right here. You can see you can use skills and stuff in town. Now, you can mount up in mounts. And the mount can double jump, but not in town. See, double jumping mount. There are items and stuff that unlock too in the town. Like once you build your gloom dagger, You'll see these little sparklies in the water. Boom. Just got a new trinket. Just like that. So there's all that. And as you progress through this, the story, you'll see more things like the job board will open up. And instead of the, the helper coins are now used for, you know, get those from the doing job board quests and you use those still at Wolf when it unlocks. And there's like various dyes and even more mounts and stuff. A lot of stuff has been added to the game. As far as your Founders items that you got from when you purchased the Founders pack, you'll get those as well. Those will all come to you, the titles, the Founder mount, all that stuff will come to you through the game. They're saying right now they're having a little bit of issues with people not getting it when they're supposed to, um, but they do unlock at a certain quest period. As far as your reward tower goes, is we everybody gets both reward towers that were planned for the game. You still unlock keys the same way by going through and leveling up your reward tower progress. And you can just unlock the rewards that are in the reward tower. So we'll get the season two Grindel reward tower, even though it has Grindel's calling and all that stuff in here. You get all that reward call, it, uh, reward tower stuff. Like skins and stuff in here still, mounts, pets, all that good stuff. Well, pets, not mounts. Um, and that's it, really. That's really the main stuff that's changed over from the uh, 
regular version that you'll see. They, but now we're going to go over the patch notes. And yes, it's still multiplayer. You can still invite friends and play with them, three-player dungeons and stuff. Right now, there's just no player HUD. You won't really see people running around on the outside. So now we're going to go over the patch notes. So we have Echo's patch quality, <laughs> Echo's quality patch to 0 0.60. They've added some a lot of new stuff, how, new housing stuff, world stuff, narrative plus stuff like that. We're just gonna go down to the patch notes. For housing, the player apartments have been expanded. They've added an outline highlight while hovering over placed items. Party members' apartments are now available for fast travel from the map. They fixed placement issues across various items. They fixed recently collected housing items not appearing as new. In the world, they've added a world scaling option this option scales enemies to your power level. It is applied via the host setting and applies to the entire party. The finale encounters now have more diverse battles, including new mini bosses. They added a brief countdown warning upon travel in multiplayer party. They fixed chests spawning on top of each other across many lost zone tiles. They fixed mini collision and out of bug bounds. They fixed numerous camera clipping issues out of bound bugs not out of bug bounce they fixed several co-op combat issues related to ability attack visibility they fixed the excavation unit drill being too picky about how quickly you retrieve its fuel they fixed an issue with the fallen greed lord dealing damage from invisible sources and they fixed an issue where the hollow horror would fall to fail to spawn for the seeds of corruption event let me show you guys real quick what the new apartment looks like all right, so here we are. I'm on a PC now. It's my Grendel that I've unlocked and been leveling up so far. So we're running up here. We have a basement. It's like a whole house now. We have an upstairs area. A little second tier with a fireplace. A little third tier area. There's an outdoor balcony here. This gives you an idea of what housing could have been like, too. Here's the main floor where we used to have all our beds and stuff at before. We got a foyer. A little dining area. So you can see, and this is <clears throat> the entrance. So you can see it's really huge in comparison to what it used to be. And it gives, really gives you an idea of where we could have been. A little bedroom area, a little, little workspace area over here in the corner. So, pretty cool. While we are here, let's go over some more of the other patch notes. So for Narrative Quest, they've added a co-op tutorial when unlocking access to multiplayer. They've added a post-game notification after defeating the Precursor Reborn Hunt. The main story quest objects and interactions now have an outline highlight. They fixed an issue where Wayfinder memories would fail to unlock. They fixed an issue that prevented players from progressing quests like No Better Friend, controlling the chaos and unraveling doubt. For Wayfinder weapons and echoes, they added reorientation windows throughout all abil abilities and attacks, allowing you to pivot and retarget enemies fluidly. Wayfinders can now early dodge out of knockbacks as you hit the ground. All Wayfinder Ultimates now refresh the heart heat of battle count and timer. For Senya, they doubled the amount Senya is healed from being hit while showboating. They increased damage reduction of showboating from 40% to 50%. The showboat now grants knockback immunity. So you see Senya has a buff. Pummel initial, initial hit AP ratio increased from 2.0 to 2.6. The initial hit break Power ratio is increased from 1 to 1.4. The final hit ability power ratio is increased from 2.75 to 3.25. The final hit BP ratio increased from 1.8 to 2.2. The fully charged hit is now 4.75 from 4. And the fully charged hit BP is now, 2 point, is now 3 from 2.3. For Lightning Grasp, they increase the ability power ratio to 2.0, and from Break Power, it's now 1 to 1.33. 
For gain favor, they increase increased the ability power from 1.5 to 2. And for break power, it's 0.8 to 1.05. The beginning animation and fully charge in now properly count as showbot voting. So when you're doing your gain favor and she's like raising up and stuff, it'll now count as being part of the showboating animation stuff. So you'll get those same benefits from like your showboating. Senya and Grindo now heal 30% HP when using their ultimates. Extended Windgrave's Righteous Strike range by 100 units. Kairos Arcane Focus will now detonate and reapply itself upon overlapping applications. For Nis, Umbral Aura AP ratio decreased from 2.5 AP to 2.0 AP. Shadow Step, they fixed an issue causing Nis Shadow Step to double hit. And total AP ratio has been decreased from 3.5 to 2.8. And her Gloom Shroud time to charge has been increased by 37.5%. They've also fixed multiple issues with NIST talents, including it, such as overwhelming Arcana, Counterplay, Reactivity, and Rally and Cry. So you see NIST has gotten a, uh, a debuff. She's been nerfed. For loot and progression, Prime talents now have a unique icon and are limited to one. Uncollected loot will now be auto-granted to players upon leaving a lost zone or hunt. Double reward tower XP gain, removed old unused materials from housing item recipes, and one-time drop pets are no longer sellable. For people that might have accidentally sold those. For mutators, players can now auto-pick up gold piles based on proximity. Gloom Shroud recharge station encounters have been reduced to 5 seconds and no longer require player proximity. Golden caches now spawn less frequently, but are more rewarding. For the UI UX, they've added quick access for resonance caches to the character menu, added toggle options for shadows, map rotation, ambient occlusion, post-processing, HDR, and hide HUD. So for those people who want to take those screenshots, you can now hide your HUD. They've added in-game text chat and fixed various UI issues, including overlapping and incorrect information. For visual polish, they improved visual presentation of gloom daggers across animations, improved visuals for echo loot and the Melfic Maw Echo, and fixed various visual issues across weapons and HUD elements. They've also fixed multiple crashes, including during quest loading and party joins, improved lobby browser refresh speed, fixed invisible players when joining lobbies from the browser, and fixed achievements not updating properly. Now there are been reports of bugs happening for the um, PlayStation 5 version, which is kind of funny. Ah, bug with multiplayer on PS5. When the second person loots a God's Blood canister, it crashes host game. Bugs, PlayStation 5. This one's kind of funny. See the video here. They're riding on top of the mount, and the mount's not really walking. So we got like a little animation lock bug. And then this one right here. Kind of funny. We went zooming up into the air. <laughs> <laughs> Do they land? The, lo the biggest ground slam ever. That's also kind of funny. Unfortunately, they probably missed their uh, their stuff with the <laughs> the Phoenix. So those were all the updates here for the game. There's also supposed to be something special coming. Um, we don't know for sure. It's kind of like a guess. Let me see here. Something Star said. We also have a juicy announcement about a secret something something we've been clicking up. So we'll see what that is here in the future. But that is the game. That is the Wayfinder. That's where we are now. If you have any questions about PlayStation 5, let me know in the comments uh, about things that have changed or whatever, and I'll be able to answer you. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.